Hey guys, welcome back. Hard at it again here, putting together this part two uh, to the Trinity Reactor Charger. A couple guys have been asking for this second part two, so here we go. Uh, right now, I'm just transferring over this uh, charger's got a log function which you can enable, uh, which will actually allow you to log all your charging up to a certain point. It will start overwriting eventually. Uh, right now I'm charging that or sending that file back over or over to my computer. Uh, I've been charging a pack for a while there. Kind of shows you some of the graphs. Um, but right now I am just going to send this one over and we'll show you that. So it's a really handy little program. Uh, Logly is not actually made by our iCharger or any of those, I don't believe, because I'm fairly certain it works for several other chargers. It's kind of a universal kind of app, if you will. Um, pretty handy if you want to monitor or keep records of your batteries. Super, super duper handy. <laughs> so, um, I've just connected the USB port from the laptop here right to the bottom of the charger. This is my little charge station I built, but there it is right there to the bottom. Uh, this is a little 350 watt 24 volt 15 amp power supply, regulated switching power supply I should say. Um, I have manually dropped the voltage down as low as I can which, well, it's about, oh I can't do that, I'll stop the transfer. 19 something, I'll show you all that in a little bit here. So I'm just going to transfer the file over and then we can kind of go through the log view program a little bit. Right now on the bottom there you can see that little RX blinking. Uh, that's showing me that I am receiving information from the charger and then I'm also connected. So you can kind of see all the stuff on the left, your input, your voltage accuracy, current capacity, power, energy, cell 1 and 2, internal, external temperatures, and all that good stuff. So you can go through and, uh, you know, you can go into an analog views and... I don't know, it shows you all kinds of different stuff. There's more options here than even I know about. I haven't really spent a whole lot of time in this program. Whoa, that looks a little funky. <laughs> anyway, so I'm just going to import this file and we will go through that. Okay, so loaded the file and this is basically the charge log. Um, I don't know how many batteries I've charged. It shows 8 minutes, 16, 25. It's an hour. So I guess it backs up an hour. I'm not sure. I haven't been logging for too long. Sorry about that. Forgot the Johnny test was on in the background. So essentially, you can zoom in on all this and, uh, you know, look closely at it all if you really want to. Um, but that's not really what I'm here for. So. I'm going to go through the rest of the features of the charger, kind of give you a little breakdown. So now you can save this and uh, start logging again, right? Uh, that's the nice thing about the charger. If you keep it plugged into a computer, it just keeps a continuous log for you. Okay, so uh, now that i got a battery plugged in here. One of the features I really like, um, you, once it's plugged in, you can just press and hold the stop button and it gives you kind of a running display so my in voltage for my power supply in is 19.75 volts battery pack this is a fully charged pack internal temperature of the charger is 37 external temperature of this is 27 degrees or 28 now um, if I go over to the right it gives me the voltages of the cells which I just charged this pack up and if I go to the left it will give me the internal resistance of the pack so this one here, overall, it's got a 4. Pretty good. Actually not bad at all, considering these packs have about 60 cycles on them each. Uh, so I'll go through some of the other features here. So that was the log files I was showing you there. You can create uh, multiple different log files. And like I said, if you get the um, uh, manual for the Junsi iCharger 206B, it goes a lot more in depth into um, the charger itself and some of the features and how to basically control and operate it. Uh, the one that was included with the Turnigy here, it did have some fairly good instruction in there 
However, the iCharger one is just more thorough. Okay, so we've got the log files. You can load all your settings, save all your settings. Uh, some of the special modes you have are a motor. You can hook up and connect a motor at whatever amperage you like and voltage that you like uh, to run for whatever, right? Which is pretty handy. A lot of people, uh, you might need that to drive something or you never know. Uh, also, you have the foam cutter which some people do use a lot in the um, air aeronautical I guess you say, what's the proper word there, I don't know, people, the guys that fly the planes and all the foam stuff they need the foam cutters uh, and this works really well for that and then you have the internal resistance as I showed you earlier um, and that's basically it, you can go through, you got your lead acid batteries, you have all kinds of different batteries, your NIM, lithium uh, let's go through some of the settings here. So we got your termination voltages. Regenerative discharge. This is really good. Um, if you have a battery in the field, something that can basically be recharged, you can discharge your packs at 20 amps, 300 watts. Just as char just as fast as you can charge them, you can discharge them as long as you have a regenerative source being i.e. a battery yada yada so it works really well in the field if you got some packs left over like I actually had uh, a couple batteries charged and I charged too many on my car and I killed the battery and this is I'm out at the lake and you know 200 miles out of 200 kilometers away from any civilization oh crap well what did I do I dumped the lipos back into the car battery with this charger and the discharge feature it worked great. Only had to discharge not even half of one of these packs, and I got the car fired up again. So pretty pretty handy feature there. Um, you can go through all your discharge stuff. How many times it beeps when things are done? Watt limit. This is nice if your power supply say is only 80 watts or 100 watts, you can limit it. Also, um, the charging current and discharging current that sort of you can limit it all so very handy if you're waiting you know like I was for a while I didn't have this big power supply uh, I was using just a regular 5 6 amp one uh, and it was handy so I didn't uh, over watt it and uh, constantly hit the temperature cutoff you can limit it and uh, yeah so you got your input limit and your cutoff uh, this is set for my car I find anything less than that will kill my car battery so it's a good thing you can use your once you get kind of a feel for it and where your batteries are sitting uh, you know where you want your cutoff to be uh, capacity cutoff safety timer temperature cutoff and yada yada so overall it's really good I like this battery a lot um, your lithium your balance this is kinda cool you got a few different options you got a CV phase your storage voltage and then always on I use the CV phase you can read all about that in the manual if you're interested and I will post some links in the description here maybe not right when this video is uploaded but shortly after I will get to the editing part so check back for that if you're interested and that's basically it so overall it's a very good charger for the money 65 I think I paid 60 bucks for it and uh, it holds its own. I love the fact it can charge these nanotechs. I, I don't really like charging over 2C, but I will sometimes go up to go 3C with these packs, 15 amps, and uh, you know, charge them pretty quick about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and you got a charge pack fully balanced, ready to go. So, there you have it, guys. I hope you liked the video. Go ahead and hit that thumbs up button for me. Um, the log view program. Uh, this is V2.75. You can download that anywhere and check into that. Pretty, pretty handy stuff. So we hope to see you again, guys. Thanks for watching.